Hello and welcome to the Select Characters Game Club, back in action and ready to roll. This week I've got Ryan, Enrique, and Chris, and this week we played Pokemon Fire Red. Great choice by Ryan, and let's uh, let's pass it over to Ryan let him get a little lead in on this game here. Yeah, so Pokemon was kind of the game that introduced me to video games when I was a little, little boy. My parents bought me a Game Boy and bought me Pokemon, so um, I just wanted us to kind of dive into uh, Pokemon Fire Red because it's the original version enough like it's it's not the original red and blue but it's it's a little bit easier to play just because the graphics are updated and all that stuff so um yeah i wanted to hear your guys' thoughts because i know like i have played pokemon a million times i know chris has played it quite a bit and sam uh you were saying before the show that you've never played it so uh that's right this is my first pokemon experience how was it i think it's interesting it's different you know i mean at least i'm sure at the time that pokemon came out there was probably nothing like it that that i can think of yeah i think uh it was huge when it came out like the world felt really big compared to other games yeah. i mean uh, mm-hmm. other games that weren't on consoles or anything like that but the world still feels pretty big to me when i play it there's a lot to do there mm-hmm. man yeah and there's a sense of potential there where you sort of i mean if you're me and you don't know what any of the pokemon are except for like you know when you saw the cartoon twice it's like when you go into the grass like anything could be there and you don't know what's going to come up and how it's going to be and like if you can catch this thing and how strong it's going to be so it always feels like there's something interesting like waiting around the corner yeah i guess that's where a lot of the appeal i guess came from i'm not sure i don't really think it could be the combat system or anything that didn't seem like it was like crazy deep or intense mm. or interesting or anything but just the potential energy of the whole game world i thought was really cool the combat is yeah. deep in the sense that there's a lot of math in it like there's just a you know shit ton of math in it and people get items in game like you know uh, vitamins like calcium or something and they give it to their pokemon to just minutely adjust each stat and those are like the hardcore players and they'll go play in you know these big tournaments and stuff but um it's yeah it, it, i think it's pokemon's interesting because it's a very deep game that you don't have to dive into to be able to play like if you're a little yeah, kid not you, at you all can just yeah. play it like it just unfolds kind of for you yeah like you only need like the bare minimum in in, in terms of game knowledge to beat it but the skill ceiling is, is pretty damn high especially in in the later ones uh after fire red came out those became increasingly more complex and like the pro scene behind that behind the later games are just insane it's it's huge how far did you play in uh in all the pokemon games um i finished them all every every single Uh, one i had i i finished have you picked up the new ones like x and y and all that uh no i haven't played those i think the last one that i played was actually fire red oh wow and but the one i played before that which is my still my favorite to date is um silver because of the entire new world i think uh, johto or kanto i think it was johto yeah but you've got both regions in there you've got johto and kanto which made the world just double in size and there was so much more to do and new pokemon and stuff and the things that i always liked about the the pokemon video games is even though they are rpgs they don't really feel like mm. rpgs for some weird reason and i can't really figure out why because all the building blocks are definitely there it just feels more like i associate it more with just an adventure game as opposed to an rpg even though it is an rpg one thing that i love about the pokemon series is that i always refer to it as like baby's first rpg because it does have a lot of those elements with turn-based combat the whole i guess magic system with like you know your power points or like what the equivalent of your mana resource um each ability costs a certain amount of mana and they they do touch upon like a lot of those elements you find in RPGs with like the resource management. Like Ryan was saying, you know, you can buy calcium and vitamins to increase like stats and all that stuff. So I mean it's it's a very like slimline introduction into like the whole concept of like what I guess uh, Eastern style RPGs are. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. <clears throat> Isn't that weird? One though? thing I like about Dokum, um, touching on what Sam was saying about what he was speaking about, like in terms of the potential, uh, the later games, especially like with X and Y, um, they actually expand on that kind of stuff a lot to the point where I think that like no two Pokemon you capture are going to be the same. Hmm. Yeah, they can actually have different base oh, stats. Yeah. They included this concept called like the Natures, where Natures actually are like passive towns that they have, and you can kind of crossbreed. I mean, it's actually really in depth. Yeah, now. I've um, oh, yeah, I, I mean, like Chris, I stopped. <clears throat> I stopped at Fire Red. Did Fire Red come out after Crystal? I think it did. Uh, I think so, because it was like the, when they when they went to that stage of like remake and everything. Yeah, so Fire Red was the last one I played, but the last like new, because Fire Red's a refresh, the last new game I played was 
crystal. Oh wait, isn't that the one where the 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 Pokemon sprites are animated at yeah. the start? Because, yeah. That, when I saw that the first time, when I was just a kid, that blew my fucking yeah. mind. Yeah, it was great, and that's I mean that's kind of where I stopped because I remember Ruby and Sapphire came out later. And I saw that and I was like, mm, this isn't the Pokemon I'm used to. And I just went, I kept playing the first, you know, the first, uh, I guess, six games or whatever, because, you know, there's three each. But um, I, I stuck to those games because um, I felt like Pokemon was evolving past my childhood, I guess. And yeah, I guess but so. now after um, going back and playing Fire Red, uh, I want to go play all the new Pokemon games. Like I want to find the, the ROM Swarm and really dive into them. Yeah. I said, do you have a DS at all? Mm -mm. I was like, because if you had a DS, X and Y are actually really fun. Cause, yeah, um, that's what I that's yeah, what dude, I heard like, as um, well, man. Yeah, they fleshed them out a lot, like with with like the whole uh, nature system and all that. But on top of that, you actually have like this little, I can't remember what it's called, but um, I guess like the bottom part of the DS screen, you can actually like play and interact with your Pokemon, and it raises their affection for you. And then like when you have a certain affection with your Pokemon, it actually gives them like even more bonus stats to the point like I think depending on like, the Pokemon, they can actually survive a critical hit. Um, they get and survive with one health. It, like if they're about to faint, their affection is high enough. There's some like, some really cool things you can do with it. And then there's the whole concept of items. You can actually equip them with certain items that'll increase their attack speed and things like that. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, when when I saw like the the screenshots and the trailers for the newest Pokemon games, I was kind of thinking about getting a DS because it looks very very good. Mm -hmm. And by by the way, I know that this is about Fire Red, but for some reason I I thought that this was going to happen. Whenever people start discussing Pokemon, you start discussing the entire franchise as opposed to just one yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's it's because of the nature of it because at its core it is like a very simple game, but yeah. there's so much you can expand on which and they had to different degrees and different like series. Yeah, plus the the classic iterations of that franchise, they all feel largely homogenized because they center around the exact same mechanics and even the exact same visual style. So they sort mm -hmm. of blend into each other if you know what I mean. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess going back to Fire Red, one thing that I loved about Fire Red was kind of like the Metroid um, kind of style of discovery that it had, where as you progress through the game, you do reach these certain obstacles that you can't pass at that point in time. But then as you go further out, you'll get like an item that'll teach a Pokemon a move that you can backtrack suddenly and then unlock that path that was blocked off. Oh, course. yeah, like, really cool like cut. Yeah, they're hidden, and, yeah, they're yeah gotta machines. cut those bushes for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, Sam, now that you've played what a lot of people think is the the best in the series at least of the old of the old games do you want to play the other ones as well i don't know i mean maybe if i could play them on the computer one of the biggest sticking points to me was like the battle speed in general and so being able to play it on a computer and jack that up to 4x helps i mean yep. like a huge amount uh, yeah i i thing. uh i found an emulator for my macbook and it doesn't have the free it doesn't speed up so I have to play oh, Pokemon in real time, and it was like, oh my god, because I I didn't get to I didn't get super uh, far. I get to like Lieutenant Surge, and uh, that's I, I, when I got to that point. I was like, man, if I was able to speed this up, I probably would be three quarters of the way through the game by now. <laughs> was, yeah, but I don't actually, know. Speaking of Lieutenant Surge, how did you guys feel about like that whole concept? Because I mean, a big a big theme with Pokemon is like that whole rock paper scissor thing where different elements do better against different, you know, elements. So you yeah. have these trainers that are basically just, you know, I guess uh, just an ace, master of one element kind of thing. I like that. I think it's, I think it's cool. And I, I think it, I think it fits well into the lore of Pokemon. Yeah. Just because I guess it was fine. it's like, if you're, I mean, if you're having little kids go through this country or whatever, this, this region and they're fighting all these gym leaders, I feel like it fits for them to have to show that they can beat each type of Pokemon. Hmm. So I thought it fit really well into the lore, and I enjoyed going from each gym, you know, gym to gym. I've always enjoyed, like, knowing, oh, man, I got the water gym up next, or, oh, man, I got the, the plant gym or whatever. Yeah, well, like the feeling you have when when you're just traversing through through the wilderness to get from one town to the next, and all your potions are gone, your Pokemon are near dead, and you finally, finally reach that city, like the new one. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. always a great feeling. That it's just it, like uh. th that's what I mean. It feels like an adventure, an actual adventure. And you can, you can actually do stuff in a big world and sort of. You know what's not a great feeling? Mm -hmm. When you finish a damn dungeon and you walk out and all your Pokemon are like half dead or dying, you know, and you only have like one left. Everyone's about to black out. And there's one battle. And you realize, left. oh man, the town's right next door. And as soon as you step out, your fucking rival shows up and oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> kicks you when you're down. 
Uh, I remember that when I was like, well, here, this is one of the things I think is cool is about Pokemon. You play it through the first time, and then now, based on everything you know from the first playthrough, you have to go, like, when you play through it again, you have to adjust your strategy for that. So, like, when I was little, I remember I picked Charmander first, but then I realized, oh, shit, the Brock's the first leader, and Charmander doesn't do yep. shit until you get Metal Claw against him. So, um, and the, the same thing with your rival. Like, I would be like, oh, cool, I'm out of this place, and then the rival would show up, and I'd be like, well, now I know I have to go raise my Pokemon to this level before I can even get out of this cave or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. it, it, like, it, it makes you go back and retroact retroactively change your strategy hmm. i went bulbasaur all day and just dumped all the levels <laughs> just straight up into bulbasaur <laughs> bulbasaur was actually a good starter because i think he was actually pretty good for the first few gyms yeah, yeah he's he awesome i mean when you're like exclusively leveling him as well like to the detriment of i guess everybody else like it, it makes it a little bit easier yeah you know, I found that that was something that always happened to me, especially with, like, the early iterations, like Fire Red. You always had that one Pokemon that was just jacked up over the <laughs> other ones. Like, he was usually around, like, five to six levels over everybody else. Yeah, I actually have yeah. a Charmeleon that's level 20 and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I will say about Fire Red is that I think it is an incredibly designed game. Yeah. But I don't know if it is an incredible playing game. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Like if you like if you were crafting a game, a lot of the things they did I think is really amazing. Like the way you set up gems that are unique to one element and the way that you have a depth to all the game. Like I was reading stuff online about all the stats and stuff and I was like, That's mind blowing, that's amazing. But like you don't need any of it to just mm -hmm. play the single player game. Yeah. So from like a mm -hmm. design standpoint, I think it's all really amazing, but actually playing it is maybe a little underwhelming. Yeah. But don't I mean forget, don't forget that we are not the true demographic here. I guess that's true. But I mean, are we not? Who is? Doesn't everybody still, love it's Pokemon? It's still aimed at, at, at like younger kids in what well, in, initially was and because of how the games felt, or at least they felt up to uh, Silver, they felt like they were designed for well, not young young kids, but, but kids nonetheless. That would explain a little bit, probably, mm -hmm. huh? Like, why the strategic decisions aren't always very complicated, yeah. and, and right. why, in general, there's not a whole, whole lot going on there. But, like, as far as, a, like, designing a game and making it feel great, like, you you know, the randomness of what Pokemon you're going to get. I mean, I know they're tied to areas and stuff like that, but it feels like the next thing I fight could be anything, you mm -hmm. know? And if it's something awesome, I want to catch it. Like, that feeling is great. It's just designed yeah. extremely well. And it's just yeah. playing it, I guess, you know... Part of it's speed and part of it's just like um, a little bit of lack of like tactical and strategic planning, but I feel like it'd be wrong of me to ask that out of this game. <laughs> like, I think it would not be true to itself if it started diving into all that stuff. So, um. Well, I mean, going back and playing it, um, it, to me it almost feels like it's, it's on the cusp of being like kind of like a role-like dungeon crawler because you do have a lot of those elements in place and if they were to add a little bit more complexity or I guess a little bit more difficulty in it, I think it would actually make for a really good kind of roguelike because like Ryan said, there's those random encounters that once, you know, once they kind of happen once, it makes you go back and rethink your strategy and how you approach it. Like, you know, once you cross, I think, Mount Moon and, you know, you run to like a certain person there, you're like, crap, okay, next time through, I know I need to have my Pokemon up to this certain level so I don't get like steamrolled by the end of it or I know yeah. I need to have like these items so I can recover before this point because I, I'm gonna get like surprised by you know an enemy or a surprise battle after you saying that one one of the things I remember from my first my first playthrough of Pokemon that I regretted <laughs> and I never picked or I always picked the opposite ever since then was when you have to pick between uh, uh, Kabuto and um, Ammonite the fossils oh yeah and I picked, the, the little fossil I picked Ammonite that's the that's the base level right Ammonite and it goes into Amistar or something? Amistar? I think so. Anyways. Yeah. What the heck? Why would you why would you choose that? I don't know. Did I was you... like seven years old. <laughs> and then uh I, I saw Kabutoff's like later uh from a friend, like when I battled him, I was like, Where did you get that? And he was like, Oh, he's you way just cooler. Pick it. Yeah. And I've never He's way cooler. I've never picked Ammonite again. <laughs> Scythe hands. <laughs> but um question, because I I'm I'm sort of gauging like everybody's responsiveness, I I guess to the source material. And do you still do you think that a large part of why you still love those games is because of the brand itself? Yep. Because you grew up watching Pokemon. Yep. That would explain why yeah. the three of us are pretty enthusiastic about this and sounds like, eh, that's right. <laughs> well, the Pokemon in the video game don't talk. I thought they were supposed to talk. And they never say anything. Nah, they don't. But no, no, they, they, they only say their own name. Yeah. 
Not in the game, though. They just make a weird yeah. little chirp. Yeah. But, but I think that was also limitations with the system, though. Probably. Yeah, yeah of, co- of course. I think when it first started, you know, like, they're, it's like the color palette. It was very limited, so they kind of just stuck <laughs> with what just they type had. It, just type it in. Like, everybody else talks. They do it sometimes. I mean, like, there's some Pokemon you run into, and, like, you know, you'll see the thing says, you know, Pika Pika, or it'll say, like, Spiro or some random shit, but... That's true. For, yeah, from the sound effect at point of it, like, it's literally just, like, that weird, like, it almost sounds like like a corrupt file. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's 8-bit for you. Huh. Yeah. When it's kind of cool because like they actually kept uh, they, uh, it was almost like tradition, but they kept it for the later installments. So even to the games now, they still have that same sound, which you know there's no there's there's no reason for it now, but it's still there. Yeah. It's tradition now. Did you guys? Um, well, speaking of that, did you guys get connected to any of your Pokemon? Like, do you still have them saved on one of your old cartridges? Oh man, if I knew where my cartridges were, but I, th- I think I still have my my entire party in in silver somewhere. I need to find it. Oh, yeah, it pro- you know, probably by now the battery has run out. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, they probably all kick the bucket forever. Yeah, I have I have pokemon that are over 10 years old on my crystal version and i'm pretty sure the battery's gone dead and i'm very sad to try it out yeah, see it, it's always been really hard for me to get attached because I'm, i like to min max and pokemon's just one of those games where like when you're min maxing your approach you can't afford to have like that attachment to them yeah i guess so damn dude you're all business all business i mean hey you don't get to be part of the elite four by fucking around and on, and on that bombshell yeah i um uh... I think we said all we needed to say on this. So, so it was a good pick. Yeah, yeah. So verdict on Pokemon. I mean, obviously, Chris, Enrique, and I like it, love it. Sam, you're you're uh, what are, uh, where are you Luke, at? A little bit more than lukewarm. I can appreciate okay. it. Does that? I can appreciate yeah. it, but I myself don't think that I would prefer to play it. I think that's um, a fair, fair uh, assessment for someone who's never played it. That's true. Yeah. 